Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Celia Prescott. I'm a PhD student at the University of Southampton, and I'll be presenting today on my master's research, which compared two methods for modeling ancient sailing routes over the Levantine Basin, least cost path analysis and circuit modeling. So GIS cost surface analysis has become the standard method methods for modeling past mobility over land and sea. With the widespread availability of environmental data, cost surface analysis is a relatively simple and efficient method for producing maps of ancient routes and, move, and uh, movement patterns based on the restraints of the physical environment. Uh, this is a much um, more efficient method than trying to predict where people would have been traveling based on social, economic, or cultural factors. It's easier, it isn't easy to digitally model human choice when it comes to movement. The most popular form of cost surface analysis is least cost path analysis. Uh, this is where you set two points, a source and a destination point over a cost surface. A cost surface is essentially a grid raster where every cell contains a cost value defining how difficult um, or easy it would be to traverse that section of the land or seascape. So least cost path analysis uh, calculates the single optimal path of least accumulated cost over a land or seascape and, present, and presents it as a, as a static line between a source and a destination point. Uh, so a good example over a terrestrial landscape would be uh, this one I put up on screen by Abu Diwan and Dumit, um, who calculate the least cost path from Beirut to Baalbek using slope data, which is fairly typical of these types of uh, terrestrial least cost path models. In maritime contexts, specifically when we're talking about seafaring, uh, least cost paths are often created using weather data instead, and in particular wind data, uh, being the sort of primary influence on ancient sailing. Uh, a good example of this is Scheidel's Orbis model, which calculates least cost paths for sailing over the Mediterranean Sea during the Roman period. And the image on the right highlights the sea routes of this model um, created using wind data primarily, but also current and wave data. Uh, there are many limitations to least cost path analysis. And because it is the most popular method of digital mobility analysis um, and the one that's been around the longest, these limitations have been extensively discussed. Um, there are many issues with the way least cost paths visualize movement. Firstly, they represent travel in the form of a single static line. This has the effect of encouraging and um, even forcing to some extent the interpretation, the interpretation, um, sorry, uh, yeah, the interpretation that this was always the path that was taken, regardless of social, cultural, or um, other such factors. This interpretation is heavily subject to environmental determinism. Uh, in reality, a whole host of other factors would have played into the exact paths people would have taken, not least of which would have been human choice. Um, another limitation of least cost path analysis is because they only present a static line of movement. They lose some of the dynamism of real life travel. They emphasize source and destination points rather than the actual process of mobility. So in maritime archaeology, we talk a lot about the process of, sea of seafaring, the experience of mariners at sea. And um, least cost paths sort of erase a lot of that conversation. Um, you can see in this model, the sea sort of becomes, it's literally black in the picture. It's an empty basin. You get the impression that the ship just sort of goes from one point to another, but what happens in between? In response to the limitations of least cost path analysis, a number of alternative methods of mobility analysis have been proposed. Uh, Sapadi and Sturt at Southampton offer one of the most compelling, in my opinion. They create cartograms to distort physical space in terms of the estimated time it would have taken to sail from one point to another. Uh, David Gall on uh, the left has also done some incredible work uh, in modeling maritime mobility, particularly targeting the issue of the use of low resolution averaged wind data by running hundreds of uh, sailing simulations to get really high resolution least cost paths, which we don't often see. Most relevant to my research, however, is the work of McLean and Rubio Campillo, who use a technique called circuit modeling 
to model sailing over the Roman Adriatic. Circuit modeling is a method of mobility analysis that borrows from electrical circuit theory. Circuit theory is based on Ohm's law of resistance, which uh, defines the inverse relationship between current and resistance, current flow and resistance. So the greater the resistance value between two points, the lower the potential for current flow between them. Circuit modeling essentially imagines movement over a surface as current flow with each cell of a cost surface containing a resistance value. The greater the resistance value at any point on the surface, um, the more difficult for current to flow over it and the more difficult for travelers to move across it. Importantly, within a certain range of resistance values, current will still flow over that surface. It'll just be a smaller amount. In this way, circuit modeling represents a range of potential pathways as opposed to the single optimal least cost paths. Um, with some more likely than others within a certain um, range of environmental constraints. So circuit modeling has mostly been applied in ecological contexts. Um, it's rarely been applied in archaeological ones, and to my knowledge, only once in a maritime archaeological one by McLean and Rubio Campillo. Uh, thus, its specific strengths and limitations are not as clear as in the case of such methods as, as um, least cost path analysis, which has been around for ages and people have discussed to death. Um, this method of modeling is very promising, but in order to further refine it, it would be useful in my opinion to first apply it repeatedly in new archeological contexts, and second, observe how it compares to and complements more traditional methods of mobility analysis, like least cost path analysis. Therefore, the aim of my research is to apply circuit modeling, or was, to apply circuit modeling in a new maritime archaeological context for sailing over the Levantine Basin, and to compare it to least cost path analysis in the same archaeological context. There were some important factors to consider when planning out my methodology. The first was my choice of points of departure. Um, I chose two models sailing out of uh, Beirutus, the modern Beirut, in Lebanon, and two multiple sites across the Levantine Basin in Egypt, Cyprus, Anatolia, and along the northern and southern Levantine coastlines in order to represent the variety of maritime connections um, existing in the Levant throughout the Roman period, which was my sort of period of study. But these connections have been around for like a big chunk of history anyway. I chose to model sailing over the months of January, April, June, and October um, in order to represent sailing during the four seasons in the Eastern Mediterranean anyway. Before making my cost surfaces, I had to decide how I was going to assign cost or resistance values to each cell in my grid. Um, I had to define sort of horizontal factor, which is what that means. For the purposes of my case study, I assumed that the ship sailing over the Levantine Basin was a Mediterranean square sailed vessel. Uh, this is because this type of ship is very commonly attested in the iconographic, uh, textual, material, uh, ar general archaeological records. Uh, there has been a lot of debate over the windward sailing capabilities of these types of vessels. The most widely cited paper in regards to this is Whiteright 2011. Um, who, um, who sort of defines, um, who comes up with a bunch of values for the maximum speeds this type of ship would be able to sail at different angles to the wind. And he bases this off of um, experimental archaeology and um, a bunch of other previous literature. Uh, more recently, David Gall has published a paper uh, in 2023 called The Elephant in the Room, sort of opposing a lot of um, the existing literature on the windward sailing capabilities of square sailed vessels, but it's outside of the scope of this thesis to come up with new ones, and I don't know how. So I'm going to go with the existing values on this one. Having discussed some of the relevant factors that went into creating my cost surfaces, I will now explain how I made them. Since wind was the primary factor affecting sailing speed in antiquity, I used wind data 
as the main input to create my cost surfaces. I gathered wind data from the open source Copernicus Climate Data Store ERA5 reanal reanal reanalysis data set, um, which, um, which contains open source UNV wind component data for all months, all days from 1979 to 2023. Um, I then, this was a lot of data, so I then averaged it. So I had one file of wind data for every month of the year. It was then a fairly simple process to convert that wind data into wind speed and direction rasters for every month. On the left of the screen, you can see um, the wind speed raster I created, for example, for sailing out of uh, Berutos in April. And on the right, or yeah, on the right is the same wind speed raster, but with wind direction points overlaid. So I created these rasters for, um, by applying these sort of common mathematical equations for every month of the year. And I had my wind speed and direction rasters. Where am I? To transform those wind speed and direction rasters into cost surfaces, I used a toolbox called the Transit Toolbox. This is a toolbox developed by Gianmarco Alberti uh, in 2018 for the automatic generation of cost surfaces. And it's basically a toolbox that you download that's compatible with ArcGIS Pro. It requires as input wind speed and direction rasters, a vector defining the source point of travel, in my case, Beirut, Beirutos, and a horizontal factor table defining how cost would be allocated across every cell of the output, raster, of the output cost surface raster. Uh, like I said, I created this table using values derived from existing literature on windward sailing capabilities of square sail vessels. So I inputted all of my inputs and got as an output um, an accumulated cost surface raster and a backline raster for each of the months of January, um, April, June, and October. Now that I had my cost surfaces, it was time to use them for mobility analysis. These cost path analysis in ArcGIS Pro is fairly straightforward. Uh, I simply used the, the inbuilt cost path tool, um, which takes as input the accumulated cost surface and backline rasters generated earlier, as well as vectors defining source and destination points. And using this tool, I generated least cost paths for sailing from Beritos to all the specified destination points for those four months I was talking about. Uh, these can be easily visualized in ArcGIS Pro, either according to uh, the month you're sailing in, as in the left slide, or according to the destination point you're sailing to, as in the right. In order to perform circuit modeling, uh, I use the open source software Circuitscape. This requires as input a resistance raster, which um, is the same thing as the accumulated cost surface rasters I generated earlier, and a point file defining the locations of source and destination points. Running this in the pairwise mode, I the software outputs current maps, showing the flow of current between each set of points in the point file. After running Circuitscape, I was left with current maps showing the flow of current between Berutus and every destination point specified, for the four months mentioned. It's cool. Uh, now that I had generated comparable least cost paths and current maps, it was time to compare them. Laying them side by side, there are some immediate differences that are apparent, first in terms of visualizations of space. Least cost, path, least cost paths have been criticized for depicting far too static a view of movement, as I spoke about earlier. A big focus of some of the newer methods of modeling maritime mobility has been looking for ways to overcome that really uh, 2D dry Cartesian uh, way of mapping really dynamic processes like sailing. Um, for example, the cartograms that we looked at earlier. Current maps, by portraying movement as literal current flow, 
presents a much more fluid portrayal of the sea and of sailing across it. The focus is no longer so much on those source and destination points, um, but on the space in between them. So your sort of your, your interpretations of whatever's going on are going to be mo far more influenced by what you're seeing in the middle as well as at the beginning and the end. And so I think the role of the sea in seafaring is emphasized way more using current maps than least cost paths. Second, and on a related note, uh, whereas least cost paths encourage the interpretation that mariners would have only one choice of route to sail uh, based on the perfect environmental scenario and that they would have always taken this route, um, current maps leave more room for adaptability and change and human choice within those restrictions. Therefore, they model more of the social, economic, and cultural elements of seafaring than least cost paths. And there's a lot more to be said for the human elements of sailing um, that I can't cover right now, but I just, it's really cool. Moreover, one huge limitation of uh, many of the models of sailing that are coming out right now is that most of them used use um, averaged, very low resolution weather data to, um, to construct their models. This particularly erases some of the more subtle regional and uh, daily variations in weather patterns that affect sailing. <coughs> Processes such as the land sea breeze, which alternates every day, and which are essential to mariners looking to sail close to the coast, for example, in adverse prevailing wind conditions, are completely erased. And we know that mariners must have been uh, making use of these, of these uh, weather patterns that can only be identified with, uh, by us uh, looking at high resolution spatial and temporal weather data. Least cost paths often depict the optimal sailing route as a direct crossing. So this is a sailing route that doesn't um, pass close to the coast. So the extreme example here is this very wide one from Beretus to Ashkelon in the south of the Levant. Um, when routes are closer to the coast, um, as in the, the ones for the other three months, closer to the right, when routes are closer to the coast, they still don't hug the coast as mariners were known to do in the past, and they're still not accurate. Current maps, on the other hand, deal with this problem a little differently. Um, although the area of highest current flow you can see is still veers farther from the coast, they're based on the same averaged wind data, because, because they portray these sorts of blurred zones of connectivity, um, this group of potential pathways instead of one single optimal one, they still leave room for the possibility of coastal sailing, even if uh, they uh, don't imagine that it was the most likely one. When you're looking at these maps, you can imagine that in adverse wind conditions, it would have been possible to sail closer to the coast. One minute, let's go, what? Okay. Let's, let's go, let's go forth. Uh, there's also something to be said for how each of least cost path analysis and circuit modeling treat the issue of seasonality or how seafaring is different during different seasons. Um, this is an area where um, I think uh, these two methods are different, but one is not right and one is not wrong. So least cost paths depict much more variation from month to month um, in the routes they're portraying, whereas current maps um, because they're sort of more blurred, more fluid, you can't really see as much variation in them. I don't know if one is more right than the other. I don't really think it is the case where one is more right than the other, but I think this is an example of how these two methods complement one another quite well, um, because an archaeologist can look at either one of these maps and make different interpretations of when sailors were sailing in, in the ancient uh, sailing season. Uh, they can look at this wild least cost path out here and think, oh, that's absurd. There is no way that people were sailing to Egypt in October. But then they can look at this current map and think, oh, for sure it was possible to sail to Egypt in October. And so I think um, looking at these two methods together, yeah, 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 okay. Looking at these two methods together um, forces the archaeologist 
to confront any biases they have relating to the questions they're asking, and to second guess them as a result. Uh, okay, then in conclusion, I think the true strength of these new methods of modeling possibility digitally is only realized uh, when used as complements to more traditional ones and not as complete replacements. Um, yeah. By applying circuit modeling to the question of sailing over the Levant alongside least cost path analysis, specific strengths and limitations are revealed, and it is only through the repeated applications of new methods of modeling digital mobility um, and their use in complement with more traditional ones that they are refined. Uh, their specific strengths and weaknesses are identified to increase knowledge on maritime mobility in the past. Thank you. <laughs>